are going to be learning all about mouse move and we're going to recreate this. I've created this on flexbox.io. It's a website for one of my other courses. And when you move your cursor over top of the window, the shadow sort of follows you around. And just to show you what's going on here, if we inspect this right here, you see that I'm just dynamically updating the style of that H1 tag, depending on where your mouse is on the actual uh, page. Now you can also do this on your phone where I've tapped into the accelerometer and depending on where, how far you're tipping your phone, it will also follow you around. So it's what we're going to be building today. This is, we kind of go crazy at the end here, moving it up and down, but we're going to start with just this, which has our emoji. Whoa. And you can edit it. I've put a content editable on there and we have a hero here. So what we're going to do is we're going to listen for a mouse move event on our hero. And then when that changes, we're going to figure out how far and where should we put the text shadow on this whoa here. So we're going to go into our script tag here and first we'll grab the hero. And we'll also grab the text inside of that hero, which is our H1 tag. Now what we need to do is make a function called shadow. It's going to pass us the event. And then down here, we're going to take our hero and add an event listener or mouse move. When the mouse is moved, we're going to run the shadow. Good. Maybe we'll just console log the event inside of here. See what we're dealing with. Go to our console. Good. Now, anytime I mouse over, what we're going to do is we get all this information about what happened. And in there, like many of these other videos, we find out that we have some information about the offset left. So let's go into here. And first of all, what we need to do is get the width and the height of the thing that we have hovered over, which is the hero. So we'll say const, and we're going to use some ES6 destructuring here because let's code it without destructuring first, and then we'll rename it. So width is equal to hero dot offset width and height is equal to hero dot offset height. If you're a hot shot, you can do it in one line. So you could const offset width is going to be equal to width and offset height is going to be equal to height. And that is equal. We destructure that right off the hero element. So these two things, these two lines are like this, whatever you prefer to read, you can do that. Um, and then we also need to get the information about where the person's cursor was. So we'll say let, and I'll tell you why we're going to do let instead of const in just a second. Offset X is going to be equal to the variable X. Offset Y is going to be equal to the variable Y. And we're going to be taking that off of the event. That's the same thing as doing E dot offset X and E dot offset Y. We want these values right here, 180 and 100. Now let's console dot log X and Y. Hey, look at this. Okay. So go, go to the top corner and you see zeros go to the very bottom, right? And you see 700 or however big your actual one is. So, that's looking good. We're seeing information, but one weird thing is if you hover right in the top corner of this H1 tag, you see that these values are close to zero. Now what's going on here? If we put a background on this element here and I hover over top the top corner of the red, it's giving us values like zero. Look at it. It's like 140 right here and then zeros right here. Huh? And what's happening is that the event, even though we're listening for the mouse move on the hero, if there are children elements inside of the hero, it's going to give us the X and the Y of the actual element that we hovered, which is kind of a pain. So we need to do a little bit of uh, normalization here to say, okay, if the thing that we're actually hovering is this H1 instead of the hero, then modify the X and the Y values so that they're going to be consistent across all of them. So what we do here is we say, if this does not equal event dot target, then and hold on. What is this console log? This, this is going to be a div of the class of hero. Okay. What is going to be event dot target? The target is going to be the thing that it actually triggered on. Whereas this is going to be the thing that you listened on. So it's always going to be hero for this, but the target, what it got triggered on will sometimes change. So hero, 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 watch this. 
Ah, uh, I'm hovering over here, and you see that I see this is equal to the hero, but the target is equal to the h1. So if those two things are not the same, which is what this if statement is doing right here, then what we need to do is we say x equals x plus event for e dot target dot offset left, and same we'll do with y and offset top. So what essentially what we're doing is we're figuring out if someone hovers in the top left hand corner of whoa this h1 we're just going to add the like two pixels that it's given us plus whatever it is from the left and whatever it is from the top so dealing with x and y is a bit of a headache in javascript um, and this is the the best fix that we can find to work with that so now if i console log x and y and that and by the way that is why i use let because it's possible that we needed to reassign the values here now, if I hover over the top left-hand corner, you see those values aren't back to zero. It doesn't change depending on where we are. Good. Now, what we need to do is figure out how far should the text shadow actually go? So we need something that I like to call a walk. If you look at this, if my cursor is all the way at the top left, how much over and back should it go? If it's all the way over, how much over should that go? How much all the way down should it go? And I like to call that the walk. How many pixels at its most should it be stretched? So let's go up here and we'll say const walk equals, let's make it 100 pixels, just 100. And we're going to use that in our math equation. So now we will say const x walk is equal to. And here is where it gets a little bit tricky because if it was all the way over, like right here, it's not going to be 200 pixels. And if it's all the way over here, it's not going to be zero. If it's all the way over, it's going to be plus 100. And if it's all the way over here, it's going to be negative 100. So we'll say x walk equals x divided by the width times the walk minus the walk divided by two. Woo! What, what are we doing here? So essentially what that is, is if 100 is as high as we'll go, zero is not as low as we'll go. If 100 is our walk, then 50 should be as high as we go, and negative 50 is as low as we should go. So our walk is 100, but we wanna go from 50 to negative 50, and that's what this little bit of math is doing for us here. It's sort of offsetting it so that we go to plus 50 and negative 50 instead of zero and plus 100. And then we can just sw swap out this x walk, y width. This is going to be height. Then we should console log our x walk and our y walk. See what we got here. Ah, there we go. So now we've got a bunch of pixel values, which is giving us, and those are a little bit long, so we could uh, pop a quick math.round around them. There we go. Now it's giving us some good. If you go all the way to the top left, you get negative 50, negative 50. If you go all the way to the bottom right, you're getting plus 50, plus 50. So now that's all left to us is we take our text and we can grab the style attribute and set the text shadow to be, and I'm going to use back ticks here. It's going to be, and the, the way that text shadow works is it's like 10px, 10px, uh, blur, which is going to be zero, and then you want to give itself like red like that. However, this this 10px is not going to be 10px, it's going to be x walk. This 10px is going to be y walk. And we can leave this red as we have it here. So give that a refresh. And whoa, it's working. So give it an inspect. You see how those values are now being updated as we move. Negative 50, negative 50, 50, 50. We're moving it all around. That's pretty cool. And what you can also do with that is just do multiple colors as you like. So we RGBA, 255, 0, 255, 0 0.7, something like that. And then comma, we'll do it again, which x walk times negative one, we'll make that one negative. And we'll make this color to be zero, just going around the spectrum here. Take off that leading comma. There we go. So now one of them is going the opposite way of, of the way it would go. So you go left, one goes left, the other one goes right. Do it again with, we want to give that first one our y walk value. 
in this one our x walk times negative one and finally take our y walk times negative one and our x walk and we'll change these colors around so they're not exactly the same zero two fifty five zero and zero zero two fifty five take off that last trailing comma and here we go we see all of them going every which way that we have looking kind of fun you can do some crazy stuff by go up change your walk value where did we set that here you can change that to 500 and it goes woo all over the place you could set some blur modes and css so that they uh, change each other when they overwrite there's all kinds of fun stuff that we could do there the real big thing that we learned there is that when you're dealing with events you can use offset x and offset y to get the cursor where your cursor to get the position where your cursor is however if you have nested elements inside of that thing you sometimes will need to do a little bit of math to deal with it hopefully you enjoyed that and it wasn't too tough on the old noggin i will see you tomorrow